you build something, you provide value, the right people will come. Absolutely. One of the best artists of all time, but more importantly, a prayer warrior. And our faith is that, you know, our good brother is no longer in pain, dealing with any of the earthy affairs, but we pray and believe that he's in a better place. How we all doing tonight? Welcome everybody to the one and only qualified podcast with your very own Dr. George Fabry Jr. AKA Dr. G. It's a pleasure for you all to be with us tonight. You are all in for a treat. I have two special guests with us tonight that I wanna share with you all. Oftentimes, we discuss different issues and we know that we discussed the last couple episodes we were discussing the top 10 career slash jobs that have generated awesome streams of income during the pandemic and people have cultivated these arenas, these areas and are doing exceptionally well. These aren't careers that I just derived out of anywhere, but these were actually statistically proven to be doing exceptionally well. Look at us here today. It's because of a few of those careers slash jobs that were mentioned. If you haven't seen that broadcast, go check it out. But listen, without further ado, we're gonna discuss something that is real crucial. We're gonna discuss businesses, but tonight in particular, black businesses. Oftentimes, when you say black businesses, people think, are you saying that it's only black owned from the standpoint of white people, um, Asian people or other ethnicities and or races can't support? No, we just want to be recognized. We want to step out and let it be known that we are black owned, but we want all to support. Our doors are open to everybody. We want to build our communities at the same time. So I have none other than the one and only Miss Janelle McIntosh here who's with us from Trends and Stuff. She's going to also um, discuss some more on what it is that she went through her process, what made her business successful throughout the pandemic. And we have also none other than the one and only who took time out of his schedule because he was supposed to be in Atlanta, but he took the moment to be here with us on Qualified TV. We have none other than Dwayne Dillon, who's the owner, CEO, and founder of Dillon's Image. So you all tonight are in for a treat. Let's get started. Let's start off with Miss Janelle McIntosh, the owner of Trends and Stuff. We want to hear from her for just a little bit. Introduce yourself to the people here on Qualified Podcast and let them know more about your, your store, your online store, and how they can get in touch with you. Sure. Thank you, Dr. George, for having me on the show. You're welcome. Thanks. My name is Janelle, owner of Trends and Stuff. It's an online boutique. Um, I carry bags, jewelry, bracelets. So, you know, just stop by, check it out. I'm on IG, Trends and Stuff too, or you can go to my website, trendsandstuff.com, um, free shipping, so you know, you may find something that you like. Awesome. And now we have with us uh, Mr. Dwayne Dillon, the owner of Dillon's Image. Give us a brief overview, Dwayne, how you got started, um, where you're located, so the good folks can get an idea of who we have with us tonight. Thanks for having me, of course. Uh, I'm Dwayne Dillon, owner of Dillon's Image. Been uh, in business for over 20 years, and I'm a barber slash groomer. You can find me at uh, Dylan'sImage.com on Instagram. It's Dylan's Image. You can check me out. You can book an appointment in advance, appointments only. But uh, I'm a groomer, personal groomer at, at that, and I also do a lot of mentoring. So absolutely, it's a pleasure again being here with uh, Dr. George Fabry. Appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time to be with us. Definitely want to take a moment to have this conversation with you both because there are many youths that are watching our podcast. We have many adults who are watching our podcast because oftentimes people think 
that there are limitations because of their age, their color, creed, background, whatever the case may be. But we're here to inform everybody, as long as you're still breathing, I can't emphasize this enough, as long as you're still breathing, you're still qualified to begin this new journey wherever you'd like to, as long as you, number one, trust and believe with your faith that God can help you with this journey. And more importantly, you're motivated not by somebody or something, but you're so more so motivated with the will to continue to do something great because you have an aspiration to be greater. I know I mentioned last week, has anybody been committing or continuously working on their New Year's resolution? You know, have you been doing your New Year's resolutions, the things that you jotted down, the things that you said, I need to get done? So we, we, we want to ask this question. Let's open the floor to ask this question. I want, I want both of you to be real transparent and let's have this moment to discuss this as we um, break bread. What inspired you? We'll start with Miss McIntosh and then you know we can open the forum to just feel free to share with, with all of us as we are all learning together. What inspired you to start your business? I've always wanted to own my own business. Um, I went to school for business. Mm -hmm. So like, let me put my three to use. Um, so I always loved fashion and accessories and things like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Awesome. Um, did a lot of research, saw a lot of online stores popping up. Um, so I decided, let me just go ahead and do it. And I've been open now for about a year and it's going good. So it's just something I've always wanted to do. So one of my dreams that, you know, I made come true. So you basically made one of your dreams come true that's always been something that, you know, you, how long would you say it's been in your mind and then you finally said, you know what, let me do this? I would say maybe a few years, maybe four to five years. Mm -hmm. um, at first I was scared, you know, to get started because I didn't know how to get started. Um, but after, you know, talking to a few people and researching and, you know, just taking my time, making a list for myself, doing everything one by one, um, I was able to, to get it done. Awesome, awesome. How about you, Dwayne? What would you say is, the thing that inspired you or what were the things that inspired you to start Dylan's Image amongst other things that you do um, in the community? Inspired? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I never really had that much inspiration at that. Uh, I went against odd. I went against the, the, the currents of the traditional school schooling uh, college and all that right. thing and being in a field where you have to provide service and value it was a strong need mm -hmm. you know so i capitalized on that and the more i capitalized on it i saw the greater need for it and it just it took off from there mm -hmm. you know so as far as like uh getting started this what encouraged me I guess what really pushed me was to see every everyone that was around me that graduated from school, doing college, doing all this hard work that from books, and then owing the government so much money. I'm like, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but let me ask you this, because you said something that is really, really profound. You said folks who were around you kind of like inspired you, and you seen their progress. And but yet we still owe money, because I know I owe money in student loans with this with the six degrees that I have, but <laughs> thanks be unto God, it, it worked out, but we still owe money. But let's, let, let's say, can you say what was, cause you said folks were graduating around you. What would you say was your motivating element to continue, um, especially in your field? Because you mentor a lot of people mm -hmm. and quite a few of the people you mentor, you know, I know that the grooming um, was like the gateway. What would you say was your motivation to like continue as far as that journey? When we first um, started getting um, haircuts from Dwayne, he was actually in somebody's establishment and he branched out. Like one day, I recall, and I'm not trying to put his business out, but we're brothers, but he called me and said, come see the shop. And we were like, what shop? <laughs> and he just, he just said, I woke up this morning. You gotta tell the story. How you woke up that morning and you just went to the the spot and you just yeah I just, I just took a leap, leap of faith <laughs> like, I just I, I had no business plan there was no there was nothing I put out on paper I didn't plan anything right. I didn't get no loan from the banks or anything like that right. it was more of a taking a risk like if I fail I fail and going back to what, what motivated me from the people around was the fact that 
everything else I tried from working nine to five and stuff, it just didn't work. Right. It felt uncomfortable. Right. You know, it's like going to someone else's job and sitting down for so much hours and looking at what you're getting paid. It felt kind of felt kind of slavish. You know, and for me, <laughs> yes. yeah. I know whenever you whenever you have a trade and you capitalize on it, right, and you provide value, definitely will go. It will go far for you. Absolutely. But a lot of us, we get stuck in that mentality where we're afraid of tapping into that trade because of the hard work that we got to put in. So right. we hide behind the, a lot of us, not everybody, hide behind a, a, a degree right. and feel as if that, that paper or degree going to get you some type of pass. Granted, relation, relationships build success. Right. But if you don't have something else beside that, it's, you know, granted now, it's more hard work. Mm -hmm. To do a trade because now you got to put in the work right. versus working nine to five. It's kind of like you're getting taken care of, kind of. And it's it's funny you say that, and I know uh, comfortable. Yeah. What do you think about the comfortable aspect? You know, when you get too comfortable, then you know that's when you don't want to go ahead and take that risk to go out and do something that you actually want to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe that dream just gets pushed to the wayside. Very true. It's funny you both mentioned that, especially. Um, when Dylan talked about um, hiding behind a salary and then and, and not taking risk, and then Janelle just mentioned living paycheck to paycheck, being content with the paycheck because it's paying the bills and you have a little savings account. That savings account will get you in trouble because it'll make you think that you've arrived. Mm -hmm. yeah. I spoke to a good friend I remember sometime, and he said, that, George, I see business in you and and honestly i didn't know what the business was i never knew this was going to be what it was or what it is and what it's going to be i'm prophetic right now churchy no but i i never knew any of this was going to happen but this is what he said and Dwayne said this and he remind, reminded me of this the gentleman said this he said you see this establishment this organization this firm we are in it's created to give you a salary he said but if you want a millionaire if you want to become a millionaire, if you want the millions, you have to open your own establishment because this establishment was not created to make you millions. It was created to make the owner millions. That CEO millions. So not everybody, again, I don't want everybody to think that what Dwayne is saying is just quit school. No, no, no. That was his faith because his faith allowed him to be where he is. And then what he did, he then educated himself to, to then be um, established and continue. Because if you don't educate yourself along the way, you won't know how to manage. The risk-taking move you made, you won't be able to manage it. And I know you mentioned earlier, um, Janelle, you said something about research and that stuck in my head. What did you really research prior to starting your business that made you stand out against competitors or anyone else who's doing the same thing? Because oftentimes we, we're reluctant and hesitant to open something because somebody's already doing it. What would you say as far as research or what it, what it was that you did that made you stand out beyond, or I wouldn't want to say against, but beyond your competition that made you stand out? Well, I researched other online boutiques, you know, just to see what's out there, mm -hmm. um, what they're selling, what's popular, what's trending, um, and then try to put my own twist on it. Right. So, you know, getting different type of like sunglasses, different type of bags, different type of jewelry that some people don't have or people don't have a lot of that. So. Mm -hmm. I just want to have different things, so doing a lot of research, a lot of YouTube, right. <laughs> um, seeing what these other big stores have, like, you know, Fashion Nova and right. those other type of stores to see what they're selling. You know, I'm just with my own twist on it, but it took a lot of research, you know, so I want to make sure, you know, I'm getting things that people need and they, and they want. Very um, good. So you would say that anyone that's coming into the organization of, or into the realm, I should say, of building their own empire, their own brand, their own business, you recommend that they research people within that realm so they know how to outshine or how to stand out and be different. Uh, both, and also you can learn from them too. You Very can see good. how they're, they're running their business, um, different types of areas on their website or things like that that they're offering. Mm -hmm. That you can, you can do the same thing, you know, don't copy them, you know, put your own twist on it. But, you know, at least you're doing something that's trending and, you know, things that are popular. Mm -hmm. that you know that you can people can gravitate towards and shop with you awesome i remember some years ago i read a book called the united states of walmart um sam walton the founder of walmart he literally did the same thing mm -hmm. so that's the millionaire mindset what he did was he he navigated all of the industries 
that were just like him. And I believe at that time it was like Target and um, big stores like Publix. Um, I don't know if you all remember this. Some of you youngsters won't remember this. Dwayne and I will. You, you probably were up north. Extra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. These stores, like, um, but he navigated and, and he went around and looked at these different stores and he was like mm -hmm. looking at how the employers treated the employees. Mm -hmm. What made him really stand out, you know, it might not be exhibited now when you go to Walmart, but you know what? Walmart is a huge industry, whether you like it or not. But what happened was, he didn't, if you notice, if you look at the tags of the employees, you'll never see employee, you'll see associate. So he wanted it to be more personable, mm -hmm. like a family structure. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely profound that you said that, and I definitely am cultivating that mindset too of understanding that you have to research. Because oftentimes, we look at somebody and kind of mimic them, and we look at that one thing, mimic it, and we're good. Mm -hmm. But constant research is, is really important. What would you say, Dwayne, because we're in an, in an area where there are tons of groomers, tons of people um, that may do the same thing you do, or um, that may have a more a bigger following than you. But what would you say as far as your success story has allowed you to stand out, you know, more beyond the competition or those out there who are doing the same thing that you are doing? For me, it was more targeting a certain clientele. Mm. You know, you have a lot of stylists and groomers out there that they may be popular or appear to the mass. But there's always a certain certain clientele for every barber. Mm. You know, so it's more like targeting targeting those specific clients. Uh, whether it's content, you know, today the number one thing that drives business is content, social media. Absolutely. Right. Right. So you put out the proper content and push it uh, in the demographic. Mm -hmm. It draws the right people, right. and you actually weed out a lot of the uh, clients that you don't really want to deal with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's more like it's more like getting rice than sifting out the yeah. the wheat, the wheat, right? So focusing on that and working on that has been my success. Is to try to focus on a certain target, and honestly, it's it's not only a certain area that I actually look at. It's not specifically black, white, or wherever. I just put it out there. My content, and my work, it always attracts the right people. Right. You get me? Absolutely. So that makes it easy for me without even being in competition with anybody. Because my biggest competition is myself. Like Absolutely. I'll tell people all the while, if you try to compete against me, you're gonna lose big time. Because while you're competing against me, you're actually losing out on something that you can build with yourself. So. I compete against myself right. and the things that I build. So if I build something, trust me, within like a day or a week or so, uh, so I'm gonna see something that now nah, like that we do something better. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm staying in my own lane while I'm actually providing value in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and it's drawing the right people. Mm -hmm. Right? When you build something, you provide value, the right people come. Absolutely. So that's what you actually really gotta focus on: build something, provide value, and the right people will come. Very good. You said something, and I'm gonna stay on you for a minute, because you said something I, I really uh, that stood out to me is weeding out certain clientele. Oftentimes, we don't want to lose clients, we don't want to lose customers, we don't want to lose business. That's that's the that's the ulti ultimate um, purpose of running a business. You want to constantly grow, but I feel like there are certain customers that aren't in in the in, in the in the business of helping your business grow. How did you weed? While, t while focusing on a targeting uh, market that you mentioned, on um, demographic, per, to, so to speak, because you know, as we mentioned in the beginning, we're bl black business owners, we're proud black business owners, but our doors aren't just open for black folks, but we want to empower our black community. Yep. Very important, there's a big balance here. Um, but you targeting a, a certain clientele. How did you target that clientele and weed out those who were not good for the business. It's all about knowing your worth. Mm. Once you know your worth, you can do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't really know your worth, then you'll take everything. Yeah. And mm -hmm. let's face it, uh, to some percentage of people, all money is good money, right? True. Right. Uh, I beg to, on my business, I beg to differ. It's like not all money is meant for you, mm -hmm. right? So knowing your worth and knowing what you provide and choosing that and putting that on the table and 
and whoever want to accept, they accept. The ones who complain, you can't really go back and forth with people that complain against your business. Right. And the ones that actually want your service, you go out and beyond and provide for those people that actually come. Because if someone's coming to you for your service, your business, whatever it may be, you, you're, you're, you want to make sure that your personality, your professionalism is above the roof. Absolutely. Right. So you actually give more than that, that you're actually providing for that individual. And it worked out. Right? They keep coming back. They, they keep coming back. So mm -hmm. once you know your value, you actually put, you know, and you know, it's it's not about it's not about chasing chasing the finance because I learned over the years it's like when you chase what whatever you chase runs away from you, mm -hmm. right? So what's the sense chasing something when just become that and then that will chase you, right? So that's very well uh, said. Well said. I hope you all are taking notes. This is some good stuff because I'm duly noting myself and typing myself as well um, as I'm hearing um, Dylan speak. Same for you. Um, if you can elaborate some more, I know that in the beginning, I remember when you started your business mm -hmm. um, or revamped it, yeah. we could say. Um, you had some folks that, you know, I remember um, Janelle used to say, you know, I did this today, friend. This is what's going on, this, that, and the third. And we were like excited because we kind of started the same period and then you were able to weed some things out. I remember you kind of like not focusing on certain people who were just lurking your page. Because <laughs> we had those who just, that seems to be like the, some people just want to see your progress, but they're not supporting. So what would you say um, ultimately was the way you kind of like weeded out and focused on what it took for your business to kind of, for your business to succeed, especially right now? Well, for me, because it's an online business, I use um, a lot like the analytics. So like mm -hmm. the Google analytics, um, the Facebook analytics. There's a lot of data that I'm always looking at. <laughs> but it helps though, okay. because it knows, it, it tells you who, you know, coming on your page, right. um, the demographics, the location, age, everything. So wow. that helped me with knowing who to target right. and who to send ads to. Right. So that helps. Um, plus, you know, people who are like me. So, you know, it was a uh, age group around 34 to 45 was my demographics that I keep, you know, seeing that people are coming on my page and, you know, buying things. So mm -hmm. I just try to maybe like stick to those type of people. But that's how we roll. <laughs> let, 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 let's, let's open the floor. Kind of like have a candid let's have a candid moment for a few moments um while we're on that because we're talking about success we just hit a pandemic employment was lost over six million and counting millions died from this pandemic we're still here gracefully what would you say was your success even during the pandemic now because i'm going to tell you the truth i sold more apparel apparel during the meat of the like the the nucleus of the pandemic than I have ever. We're doing well now, continuously, thank God. You know, we, we, we're we we're pushing. And like um, Dylan said, content is important. So constantly putting different things out, randomly people like that you never heard of are hitting you up, they're buying your clothing and then more people are doing things, buying your book, so forth. That's what our blessing has been. But the crazy thing is, is during this pandemic, what would you both openly, whoever wants to answer first, what would you say during this pandemic was your success? What was what what caused you to continuously be successful during the pandemic? Because a lot of businesses closed their doors. I would say always running ads, um, having content on IG and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest success was the end of the year last year. So mm -hmm. starting October through Christmas. Wow. And especially Black Friday. Wow. So that was like the biggest. Did you do promos? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ads. How did you how did you approach your promos? Would you say um, a lot of Google ads, a lot of Facebook ads, mm -hmm. um, making videos on IG, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and email marketing. Too. Mm. That's real good. It's, it's a lot of stuff to learn, but I'm I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a lot. It's it a sounds lot. like a lot. a lot because these these are things. Because you got to remember, working a nine to five and still running a business that's mm -hmm. major. Mm -hmm. So people don't really understand that concept. Dylan, what would you say during this pandemic? Cause I've heard of barbers personally, I've known who, who went to go take 
or, or we could say groomers or stylists who had to go take on nine to fives, legit. They had to go get regular nine to fives because they could not sustain this pandemic. What would you say your success was during the pandemic um, that allowed you to do well and how well you would say you, you've done it during the pandemic? Well, the pandemic, it's, I worked throughout the pandemic. Wow. Uh, it got, it, it got double, like triple busy. Pandemic. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. People want to look good. So you got your business tripled during the pandemic. Yeah. Wow. Because you got you got to think about it. What sells? Back in the day, what sells? Back in the early 90s, 80s. Clothes, man. Sex sells. Sex sells. Right? Appearance. So, right? So you're looking at it now, it's vanity, sex, and the rest, right? Before, right. before it was drugs. Right. You In know. the 80s. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. So you look. War against drugs. So when you look at we're, it. We're giving y'all our age. Right. <laughs> when you look at it. I'm 25. You have, <laughs> you have vanity is the number one thing. What you look at mm -hmm. social media. Right. Vanity. Everyone wants to look a certain way. You look at how much gyms we have in the neighborhoods? A lot, a right? Lot. Sure. Right. So vanity sells. People want to look a certain way, right? right. Uh, you don't feel yourself if you're not groomed. Uh, then, then sex sells. So we're going to leave all that sex and drugs and music on that part. Let's focus on vanity. Right. So you look on social media during the pandemic. Everybody is on social media trying to figure out what's the next best thing to do, right? And everyone, they're seeing how other people in different countries or other places are still looking sharp. Wow. They're desperate. So it's almost like a lot of people, they get... They lose their personality and their sense of self in their appearance. Mm -hmm. wow. Right? So the hair growing, you know, you, you, you got to get your hair done, such and such. True. You haven't done it in such a while. You're desperate. Your neighborhood barbershop is shut down. Your salon, your stylist got COVID, such and such. So you're desperate. You're so desperate that you'll look for a stylist in another state. <laughs> right? Wow. Get your hair done. <laughs> that it, it, it was a desperate measure. So whenever you're prepared, I'm a firm believer of being prepared for an opportunity and although it was a pandemic, it was a trial, mm -hmm. that was still an opportunity and a lot of people were prepared. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people that, they, uh, trading was a big thing. Trading was right? huge. Yeah. They were prepared from before, mm -hmm. but a lot of people got prepared during. But with this whole thing, when everything fell down, it's, it's like almost, it's, it was that, what's that, if you can figure back off with the, is it the squirrel or the ants? During the summer at work, the winter, the rest has food, so food is that the squirrel? That's the squirrel. Or the, or the yeah, it sounds right. like the squirrel. The same thing happened now. It's like in the downtime, don't see them no cold. one can yeah. do anything, so there's a panic, mm -hmm. right? So people that haven't saved or do anything, they're, they're, they're panicked. People that haven't prepared. So it's always best to be prepared for an opportunity when it comes and not be prepared. Right. So it's almost like I was prepared. I had content, I was doing my thing. I thought about a lot of the clients not coming, but I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid, honestly, because I knew for a fact that it was a blessed business. And knowing that God, I still knew that God was in control, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I, I, all I did was just, was just work. And I, as I work, I, I wasn't really panicking. People around me was panicking. Sometimes we gotta be careful of everybody's lane is different. Just because you got rained on doesn't mean that I'm gonna get rained on too, right? But the statistic makes you like, well, you, you might get a little drip. It depends on what you believe. Then yeah, you might. Right. Right. So right. you have people around you, they're, they're crying, they're depressed, they're, it's a lot. But I still had a certain focus that I, I kept. Right. And while I kept that focus, the people around me, it was different. So I had to mute them out. You know, as I meet them out, another barber, I mean, he was, he was uh, afraid as well, too. And uh, the stylist. I told him, see, you know, you guys take off. At the end of the day, uh, the landlord's still with his rent. He did. Right? He did. <laughs> so, being an owner, it's a lot more weight because at the same time, you gotta really make sure that you're you're stable. So, the whole time I worked, and the other guys said, listen, if you if you're comfortable with, with working, by all means, but you gotta be careful at your own risk. You gotta play at your own risk, right? So everybody has something to say. Well, you shouldn't have worked such as this. 
Mind your business. Yep. <laughs> mind your business. Because they're not paying your bills. That's the thing. It's like, mind your business. We're, we're so busy worrying about someone else pocket and, and loan that you can put that energy towards yours and build something. Yeah. Right? So, throughout the whole pandemic, it just, me and the guy we worked in, it, it just seen it through. It was, it was amazing. But during that whole process, your mind is so creative. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, during the downtime, what is, what's so important? Right. And what can you do when there's a disaster, there will still be a need. Right. Mm-hmm. Because let's face it, we're not going backwards, we're going forward. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Right? The, the, the great book, the Bible, Bible says that men will be lovers of themselves, Self's right? right. So vanity ain't going nowhere. No. <laughs> Very true. Very great point. And, and it's, 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 I hope you all are catching this. He knows his worth. She researched to build her worth. I hope you all are catching this. This is how we all, everybody has a different way of, of finding themselves, but what we did was we stepped out to find ourselves. What would you say, Janelle, um, for you during the pandemic, ultimately that made you um, succeed ultimate at the end of the day? What would you say in one word um, made you succeed during the pandemic? Faith. That's it. That's really my middle name too, Faith. <laughs> That's my daughter's first name. And that was what I needed when I had her. But it's, it's true. <laughs> Folks, listen, we're running out of time. And I, I know th- w- there's so much more that can be said, especially by these two wonderful people who have a lot to offer. We're going to ask one more critical question. And I want you all to be as transparent as possible because you oftentimes see posts, subliminal messages thrown out on social media about this. And I want to ask this question. Um, when, you really, when you release a business, you, you, you're not release, when you open your business, and you release your products, you, you, you relinquish what it is that you're doing, you, you have your grand opening, um, you have your book release, whatever it is that launches, that allows people to know, hey, listen, I am now out here on the market, support me. Would you say you had a challenge when it came to getting support from your friends and family? I did have a challenge with family. It's a pretty, a lot of them did go and shop with me. But the most of my customers are people I don't know. Wow. Wow. How about you, Dylan? Um, support. I have support from my family and friends. Like they, I noticed they, they always root for me, which was that's the best thing that they can actually give me. Right. I can't even ask them for anything else. So right. If they give me anything, I would. I don't think I'll take it. Right. I'm more appreciative of the support, right. the, push. the push, I'll do the rest. So that was the best support that I've got was just the love, the fact that I see you, keep going, that's all I needed. Yeah. That's good. So see, it, it, it hits everybody different because some people, support and love means you have to purchase my product. Because remember, mm-hmm. like, not to get you, but- No, you're good. I didn't, I didn't open my business or start doing it because of friends and family. Mm. I didn't do it because uh, when you could, no, I use my friends. I practice on you. Guinea pigs. My test done, right? Uh, but I didn't go further thinking of you or the fact that I'm doing it for. I have to do something. You guys, you guys are always support. Yeah. But I have to step out here and do this because there's other people. I'm doing this for people I don't know. I'm providing a value, uh, providing value and service to people out there. Right. Mm-hmm. If you want to come along, that's fine. I'm not asking you to come along. You've done enough. Very true. Good people, you have heard and again have been provided with none other than phenomenal and prolific resources. People who are in the industries of their own, in their own right, um, in their own arenas, who have stepped out. Because what we want to realize is, in the United States, 2.6 million businesses are black owned. Some of you may say, wow, that's a lot. Yes, we've been progressive since 1968. That's very true. In other words, that means only 9.5 businesses in the United States are black owned. And a recent article even went as far as saying um, black owned businesses generated um, not too long ago, I think it was a year or two ago, black businesses generated over $150 billion. But here's the problem. The problem is out of that $150 billion, The article indicated that a hundred of these businesses were black owned businesses. These hundred, um, these black owned businesses, a hundred black owned businesses that were identified only hired 79,216 employees. 
That seems like a lot, but we got to remember this is countrywide. Walmart by itself did 20 times that. Walmart as an industry itself did 20 times that and Walmart um, ultimately um, generated way more money than us, 20 times the amount than we actually generated. So the question that we now have to ask is, how are we handling the monies that we generate as business owners? How are we taking care of our employees? Are we really taking care of our employees? Are we marketing correctly? Are we reaching out to the right people? Are we building back in our communities? And when I say building back in our communities, oftentimes when we build in our communities, we destroy our own stuff. So we have to ask ourselves these questions. Do we truly support each other? Sometimes you may not even have the means to support somebody's business, but it's the love that you show. Just check on the business owner. Just check on the brother. Just say, hey, how are you? I just want you to know I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you. I know that you know, you're know you doing this right now. Just know that I support what you're doing because oftentimes we don't have the monetary means to support another person, but ultimately at the end of the day, your love and support as Dylan mentioned and Janelle mentioned, family may not always be there, friends may not always be there, but it'll, in your case, maybe strangers that's supporting you. But at the end of the day, let's keep supporting each other. We're gonna provide you their information. Make sure you get in touch with them if you have any other questions. But just remember, more importantly, you are still qualified to win. And ultimately, at the end of the day, don't let that month of April finish. Month number four, finish. And you have not surfaced or touched the surface of any of your New Year's resolution. If you're created to own a business, remember, not everybody's created to own a business. But at the end of the day, if there's something you were created to do, step out. Start writing the vision. Don't share it with everyone. Everyone in your circle is not built to support you. But at the end of the day, it would be great if we do. So let's try to love more. Let's try to build each other more. And none other than Dr. G who's here. And I'm here with the two of the best that I felt that were more um, credible for this journey. Um, if, do you have any final words, both of you, that you'd like to share before we end tonight? Just take a risk. Take a risk. Jump out on faith and just do it. If you fail, you fail. If you, if you succeed, you succeed. But just at least try. Don't be afraid to start. If you don't start, you are the fast. There you go. Well, there you have it. Qualified TV. Love you all. See you all next week. Next Thursday, 6 p.m. We're going to have another um, episode with some great, great, great panelists. And I just want to urge you all to please follow them. Follow their um, IG pages. Follow them on Facebook. Support their business. And don't forget, you are still qualified to win. Peace. Let's do a goofy yeah. picture. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's fine. <laughs> a politician, a politician with his chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna be here all night. <laughs> uh. Good day to all of my qualifiers, my family, my friends. I want to take this moment to thank you all for watching this podcast. We have more to come every Thursday, every Thursday at 6 p.m. Expect to get some new material, new content that we will be sharing. We'll be covering all types, all sorts of topics. Don't miss out. Listen, follow us, subscribe. Do all that you got to do. Subscribe to our YouTube page. What are you waiting for? Let's get it done. Let's do this together. Share, comment. Provide all the insight that you have. Let us share and learn from each other respectfully and with love. One more thing. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. I am Dr. G. Fab. Also on Facebook, Dr. George Fabre. And don't forget to like, like our page. And also, if you want this merchandise, you want all these um, apparel merchandise and all of the things that we have to offer, our book, The Controversy of Divorce and Remarriage, don't forget to go to drgeorgefabre.com. Again, drgeorgefabre.com. I appreciate and love all of you all. See you next week, 6 p.m. Peace.